Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at Blue White Control, featuring three copies of Karn's Silax as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This is a legendary artifact, enters a battlefield tapped, says players cannot pay life to cast spells or to activate abilities that aren't mana abilities, doesn't come up a whole lot in Standard, and then we can pay X mana, tap and exile the Silax to destroy each non-land permanent with mana value X or less, can only be activated as a sorcery. So this is a very nice and versatile versatile answer, pretty similar to Farewell, but has the advantage of being able to play it early and also activate it early, so we can potentially sneak underneath counter spells or just get the effect from Silex a turn or two before we could cast a Farewell. Then of course we still have Farewell as a nice sweeper to exile artifacts, creatures, enchantments and or graveyards, and two copies of Depopulate as another sweeper to destroy all creatures in play, potentially giving the opponent a card in return if they control a multicolored creature, but against the mono black decks that's not very relevant. Then we have a whole host of counter spells, starting out with Syncopate to counter spell unless the opponent pays X, exiling the card in the process. We have Negate to counter non-creature spells, since so many of our cards are targeted at answering creatures, it's nice to have an efficient answer to non-creature spells. And then we have another all-purpose counter spell with Ertai's Scorn. It's actually debatable whether Ertai's Scorn is better than, let's say, Dissipate, which can exile the card we counter, but every now and then if you're up against a mono blue deck, for instance, you can get in counter spell battles and then cast a scorn for two mana as opposed to three. And our final counter spell and theoretical win condition are the two copies of Devious Coverup, four mana to counter spell, exile it as well, and then we can potentially shuffle up to four cards from our graveyard back into our library. So that's a way to potentially loop other copies of Devious Coverup back into our deck, and that way we prevent decking. If a game goes very long, we run out of cards in our library, at least Devious Coverup can get a few more back, and by putting Coverup back into our deck with another Coverup, we can essentially keep looping those for as long as our opponent keeps playing spells, can even counter our own spells if it really takes that much. But uh, in practice, the opponent is going to concede long before we establish a double devious cover-up loop. And then we can also win the game by attacking with Samurai Tokens, the Wandering Emperor, another great answer that can minus two to exile tapped creature gain two life, or start making two two Vigilant Samurai Tokens that we can put additional plus one counters onto. And thanks to Flash, we can keep up all our counter spells and play the Wandering Emperor during the opponent's turn and still activate it. So for the most part, our deck wants to pass a turn with mana available, so we can use our counter spells accordingly, but sometimes we do tap out to cast a Sweeper to catch back up, or to maybe cast a big Silver Scrutiny, a sorcery for X and double blue from Dominaria United, saying we draw X cards, and we can cast Scrutiny at instant speed if X is 3 or less, so in the early and mid game it's very nice to be able to keep up our counter spells and then still cast a Scrutiny for maybe 2 or 3 to still draw a few cards and make sure we keep hitting our land drops, which is very important whenever you're playing a control deck, especially this one where we have great mana sinks like Scrutiny in the late game, and that's often how we eventually take over. We answer all the opponent's threats one for one, maybe get a few nice two for ones with our sweepers, and then eventually, once the opponent is out of cards in hand, we cast a big scrutiny and completely take over. And then we also have two copies of Memory Deluge, which we can also play at instant speed for four mana to look at the top four cards and select two of them to put in our hand. And if we flash it back, we get to take a look at seven cards and still select two of them. So a great way to find specific answers. We can also gain a bit of life back with Sunset Revelry, potentially gaining four if our opponent has more life than we do. Can make a pair of one ones if the opponent has more creatures than we do. And we also get to draw a card if the opponent has more cards in hand. So this can also be a nice way to to recover against the more aggressive decks. And then we have some spot removal to take out individual permanents. March can exile artifacts, creatures or enchantments with mana value X or less. Important to exile cards like Tenacious Underdog, which otherwise can keep coming back. So between March, Wandering Emperor and Farewell, we have quite a few ways to exile creatures. Then we also have two copies of Fateful Absence, which can destroy a creature or planeswalker at instant speed, but does give the opponent a clue token in return, which is a pretty significant drawback. But it does kind of fit into our plan of just trying to survive until we get more 
more mana to eventually take over with a big silver scrutiny, then it doesn't matter too much that the opponent got to draw one card in the process if it means saving ourselves a lot of damage. And our deck is also pretty weak against opposing planeswalkers once they're in play, so absence is a way to retroactively deal with one, besides maybe a Silex, which can also still uh, destroy opposing planeswalkers. And then two copies of Destroy Evil can destroy an enchantment, which is quite relevant and standard nowadays with cards like Wedding Announcement and Fable of the Mirror Breaker, but can also destroy a creature with toughness 4 or greater, and Shield Root definitely comes to mind as one of the key targets for Destroy Evil. Can even put a stop in your upkeep to destroy Shield Root before taking your draw for the turn, so you don't take too unnecessary damage. And then our mana base has 26 lands total, since we don't really want to miss any land drops in this deck, including four copies of Tranquil Cove, which can also gain one life but enter stabbed, and then some more dual lands with Deserted Beach and a Dark Car Wastes, and then the Channel Lands, Soaring City, and Iganjo offer some additional utility. Iganjo especially useful in the Haughty Jin matchup, where the opponent is likely to have counter spells to protect the Jin, so Iganjo being an uncounterable way to deal for damage is quite nice. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play and we have a pretty balanced hand. So we'll keep... Turn 2, Syncopate. Turn 3, can either keep up Scorn or maybe run out of Silex already. Put on to red-black. So it looks like a mid-range deck. Harvester I'm happy to counter since it applies a lot of early pressure. And then there are a couple three drops I wouldn't mind countering, although Silex also deals with them. So I think we'll throw this down. And then maybe next turn keep up counterspell, we'll see. It's gonna be a trespasser for now. Not really a card we want hitting us and switching to knight. Although revelry is not a bad solution there to buy a bit of time. So this will draw a card, make two one ones. We will be shields down on Scorn, but the uh, plan is to blow up the world anyway. And at four mana, there's no scary cards like Invoke Despair to worry about just yet. Opponent lets it switch to Knight. And yeah, we can pass with a plan of firing off Scrutiny to draw. while keeping up Scorn. Opponent attacks, we'll jump. And if the Silex is making our opponent kind of slow down their game plan, that's all we really need, is buy time to set up our hopefully more powerful late game. Another Scrutiny's excellence. So, might want to save this one to cast it for a bigger amount. And then, could just play Cove and Pass. Could have also used Silex for 3, keep up Scorn. And then, uh, we still had Farewell to clean up the board. We'll try it this way. Take a hit from. Graveyard Glutton. Opponent did find blue mana, so they are a Grixis. Means we also have to worry about counter spells. Opponent passes. I don't think we screwed any here. So Yeah, we can blow up Silex and then have Scorn available still. And then we want our opponent to tap out to set up a uh, big scrutiny main phase maybe. Evelyn is kind of annoying. We could counter her or we could let them untap and use farewell. Although they could potentially exile a counter spell with Evelyn which would be annoying. I think we let Evelyn slide just because we have two farewells in hand that I would like to leverage. Opponent found a wandering emperor. That's pretty good too. And a Planeswalker we wouldn't be able to clean up with Farewell as easily. Finally, I'm home. 
Now we can pay for a make disappear unless they sacrifice a creature. Avalon attacks. They maybe were worried about an opposing Wandering Emperor, but the fact that they had the mana for make disappear makes me think they have one in hand here. Okay, absence is pretty good too, potentially. So yeah, let's clean up everything and see if they have a make disappear. They do. Okay, so not gonna pay for it. Question now is, do I absence Emperor or absence Evelyn? If I absence Emperor, then we can clean everything up next turn again with a farewell. I think that's the plan. And then, best case scenario, they also don't have the mana to sacrifice the clue token, so we can exile that with Farewell. So we're just trading some resources, and then hopefully we'll have lots of mana to sink into Scrutiny to take over the late game. At least that's the plan. Alright, Solkanar we can also exile after they maybe draw a card. Okay. Farewell, and then we'll still have Ertai's Corn available. So creatures and artifacts can go. Do I get rid of graveyards is the question. Probably. Don't have anything too valuable. Alright. So if they have a bunch of creature removal in hand, they're not going to be able to use it for a while. Shieldred seems worth countering. They don't seem to have another make disappear in hand. So we're good to tap out for a big scrutiny now. Underdog can be annoying since we need to specifically exile it. But could find another Wandering Emperor or a March to maybe exile it. Silex is fine, but uh, I think we scrutiny. And then I could do it for... Eight here if I tap out completely. It's probably fine. Discard to hand size a bunch. And then we should have all the tools we need to take over. Okay, there's our march to exile. Can probably discard a land at least. Maybe even two. Sure. And then now it's all about lining up our answers to the opponent's threats and eventually taking over by sheer card advantage. But the game's far from over. Opponent's miring back Shieldred here, perhaps. And Evolved Sleeper. Okay. So we don't really want to destroy Underdog when we have the chance to exile it, although Wandering Emperor is a great way to do that. So let's say I play Emperor, play Silex. Opponent can just sink some mana into Evolved Sleeper, finish off our Emperor, so maybe we wait to flash it in and exile Underdog. So Sleeper can finish off Emperor. I think I still play Silex here just to spend some mana and pass it back. Adversary with Kicker can not get back anything, so that's just a 2-2 with haste. That's acceptable. And then we'll Wandering Emperor, try and exile Underdog. And we could see them remove it in response just to deny the life gain and to make sure Underdog stays in the graveyard. Or they're just gonna level up Evolved Sleeper. Okay, Infernal Grasp at their own Underdog. So now do we counter Infernal Grasp? Do we let this happen and march when they blitz Underdog next time or do we march it now? I think we just let things happen. And 
then try and exile underdog next time. And then we can Silex for two, keep our Wandering Emperor in play. And have a bunch of counter spells up. And then I'm gonna plus so we can actually keep our Emperor around. Could even play another Silex if I want. Get the ball rolling on that one. What's going to happen next turn? Our opponent blitzes underdog, I can exile it. And then still have Scorn available. And then if they play Shieldred, I can upkeep, put a stop to destroy evil, so we don't take any unnecessary damage. Seems fine. So we want to try and keep our counter spells for big non-creature threats. Since we can pretty easily handle the creatures here. Shieldred, we can destroy evil now. Take our draw. And we'll start making Samurai. Okay. So we're in the driver's seat now, but uh, we could eventually run out of counter spells. Don't have any card draw at the moment. Soren is definitely worth answering. Question is how? Maybe Scorn to keep Syncopate as maybe a way to exile future underdogs. Don't think mana is going to be a huge issue for casting a larger Syncopate. Corpse Appraiser. That's also worth countering so they don't get the actual card advantage from it. But that would leave us without any answers. At least not uh, on the stack. Maybe that's okay since most threats seem to be creatures or planeswalkers anyway. So Exile Corpse Appraiser. Leave them with one unknown and an underdog which we can answer pretty easily. And there's a Scrutiny Perfect. Hit for three, and our opponent concedes. Yeah, we still have four cards in hand. Not sure if we were going to main phase Scrutiny, maybe leaving a little bit of mana left, or if we were going to take a few more turns to answer threats and then pull the trigger once we have even more lands in play. But uh, definitely in the driver's seat here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. We've got some removal. It's a little slow to get started. And... Uh, We'll have to play some of our channel lands out. Turn one Delver. Probably worth exiling with March. Do I do it now? So it could either be mono blue or like a blue red wizard. I think I'll do it now. Okay, is there a mono blue? Don't want them running away with an early transformed Delver. And then Haughty Jin is at three mana, so we can still catch that with the Syncopate. All right, instant speed card draw is good. So we wouldn't mind just hitting our land drops now. Impulse will let slide. Okay, so up against the mono blue deck, which is, yeah, pretty important that we hit our land drops. But scrutiny for one still feels pretty bad. I think I still uh, try and take my draw step. And then now I might be forced to scrutiny for one. Although it is one of our important tools to eventually take over in the late game. But if we miss our land drops, we're going to quickly get tempoed out by a threat backed up by counter spells. Opponent already filtering through their deck with impulse, so they probably have a pretty nice hand so that's just waiting for a few extra land drops to fully go off. A fourth land at long last. Now Deluge, they're likely to fight over with Syncopate, so I actually don't mind casting this main phase just so it doesn't get exiled. And then we just want to hit our land drops, I think. And our opponent does have a window to resolve a threat, which is not ideal. Could have waited for them to resolve Thirst to give them less information, although 
there's a chance they play Spell Pierce. So that's a reason to fire off the card draw first. So, yeah, let's see if our opponent commits a threat. Currently our best answer is maybe flashing an Emperor. And there's Haughty Jin. Okay. Don't think I need to play an untapped land here. So the plan is Wandering Emperor, opponent likely counters it. And then we can maybe untap, try another one, or go for a farewell. Could also just take four here and not fight on the stack, which will just grow the gin to deal more damage. Since it's very unlikely for them to counter. So might as well save myself a bit of damage. Also gives them less information about how to proceed. Delver resolves. Wandering Emperor likely does not. Spell Pierce, yeah, they actually had Spell Pierce. Now, they likely still have plenty of counter spells in hand. So Farewell is unlikely to work. So I think we just play a land and uh, pass once again. Maybe bait out another counter with Wandering Emperor. And then maybe set up the Farewell. I would prefer to get the Deluge out of the graveyard before casting Farewell, since I wouldn't mind kind of emptying the opponent's graveyard as well. Now that they're going for another Thirst, we can Emperor and Exile Jin. And even if they have Spell Pierce or Negate, we can fight over it with Syncopate. And then I will lose Emperor to Delver, but Jin is a much bigger problem. Alright, they had a Fading Hope. I think we Syncopate just because we can use our mana efficiently here. Could also Syncopate Thirst, but the Jin is probably worth fighting for. Alright, so that's Exiled. We gain two. Opponent draws a bunch. And then plan is probably going to be to next turn Deluge, and then turn after Farewell. Delver does not transform. I still have much to learn. Another Jin could be problematic. It's going to be another Jin indeed. And a Talarian Terror. Okay, destroy evil is useful. So if I destroy evil the djinn now, then I can fight over it with devious cover-up, as opposed to going for deluge. Yeah, there's a realistic chance we die next turn if Delver transforms, and they have a couple counter spells in hand. So I think it is worth it to go for destroy evil plus cover-up. Farewell, we cannot back up with uh, any counter spell, so that's unlikely to work out. So we'll do it now while the opponent only has two islands available. That worked. Now our opponent doesn't have to fight over Jin; they can just kill us with the current threats. But at least they aren't quite as fast as Haughty Jin, And now they also don't have the mana discounts. Alright, another Jin. Kind of hoping they fight over this Devious Cover-Up. And part of me wants to just uh, shuffle back Deluge, since we're likely firing off Farewell next turn, and I should probably exile Graveyards, but I will try it this way. And then Silver Scrutiny. So yeah, best case scenario, they counter back, they're tapped out, I untap Farewell, and the board is clear. But they might just let this one slide. And they do. We do shuffle back a couple more answers at least, and draw Wandering Emperor. Okay, so now I can maybe afford to take a hit, Deluge, maybe get that countered, and then untap, farewell. Delver still not transforming. So I might as well Deluge now, since I could technically find some interaction like another march to exile delver but then again 
It's so unlikely that I might as well give the opponent less information. Alright, once Deluge gets countered instantly. And now the question is Emperor vs. Farewell. And uh, yeah, it's a close call. Don't quite have mana for both. Emperor, I can play at instant speed, so I could maybe let the opponent untap, attack, then Emperor. But at this point, they have the mana to probably cast two counter spells. Uh, so it doesn't matter too much unless one of the counter spells is Syncopate, which still makes them tap most of their mana. Yeah, I mean, the Delver transforming also kills us pretty quickly, so Farewell is the actual card we want to resolve, I think. So I'll let them untap. Although I guess if it does transform, we could just die to a damage if they counter Emperor. So that's the drawback of that play. Alright, that resolved. Minus on Talarian Terror and pay the ward. And then we're happy if they bounce and replay to set up Farewell. Since they seem to be out of counter spells. Okay, mission accomplished. Anything else? And now we're very happy to exile graveyards since uh, we already flashed back Deluge. Another Emperor for good measure. That works. Alright. And then probably fine to make Samurai to start applying pressure. Especially with another Emperor in hand. So we've got our next threat covered. Tolarian Terror hard cast for 7 mana. But uh, we have Emperor to deal with it and a Scorn to answer any potential counter spells. Put on the gates, we Scorn. And pay the ward. Okay, perfect. Now we can start plussing and actually making progress. And the opponent stop decking. The mono blue deck has a few card draw spells, but they're not actual card advantage, they're mostly cantrips. Another turn could actually be scary. But uh, at this point, I still feel quite favored. Now, Terror has 7 mana. So x equals 7 is 8 total, and then we still need to pay the ward. So we actually don't have the mana to exile it with uh, March here. But we can chum block and then exile with a minus 2. So we'll just plus for now. We've got the edge in this fight. And then we're happy to chump. Could also take 5 down to 1 and keep our token around. That's probably better. And I think with this hand we can afford to. Alright, step one I'll attack. And then we'll exile. That works. And our opponent explodes. All right, close game here against Mono Blue. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems acceptable. Could be weak to an aggressive start. And a turn one Delver certainly counts. Although we have Iganjo as an uncounterable way of answering it, at least. Still don't want it to transform right away. Lightning Strike. At least means our opponent's a blue-red spells deck instead of a mono-blue counter spell deck. So they're less likely to kind of play a tempo game where they uh, kill us by backing up an early threat with counter spells, which is one of the best ways to beat a blue-white control strategy. But a haughty Jin is still quite scary to see. 
We could destroy it right now, or probably better play Silex, take a hit, and then next turn we can blow up everything. Better opponent can fire off a bunch of burn spells here, growth a haughty gin to get some damage out of it while they can, and we could be in trouble. It's gonna be Balmor, so our opponent's adding even more to the board just to get more damage, maybe. And Lightning Strike to the face. Are we dead to another Lightning Strike here? Play with fire instead. So that's 9 damage down to 1. Okay, so we're dead to another burn spell. And we don't have much of a choice here. We need to blow up Silex on 3. So yeah. Haste creature or burn spell and we're dead. If they can't close out the game, we could easily take over. But it's still gonna be rough to have to keep up a counterspell even for a one mana play with fire at all times. Opponent goes digging. And another Delver. Alright. That we can maybe kill with Iganjo. But we have to kill it since we're at one. So doesn't leave any leftover mana. Okay. We'll just pass. Does not transform, so maybe another creature in our future. And we're also missing a land 6 to cast Farewell. Bonus got Soaring City to save their own Delver. And they can replay it. Okay, we need a land. Syncopate does not do it, so now the only out is Deluge finding land plus removal spell, or maybe better yet is our uh, two mana Sunset Ravelry. And we did not get there. So yeah, early pressure from Delver, and our opponent's aggressive plan worked out. So I can grab a land and an Emperor, but yeah, Destroy Evil not quite lining up the way we want it to. And our fist full of counter spells is not gonna matter. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and the uh, triple Silex is maybe a bit much with only two lands, so we'll take a mulligan. This is better. And then maybe just get rid of March, even though it's our only early interaction. Just because Farewell is a better catch-up mechanism, Deluge can help us hit our land drops. Could also see an argument for Emperor, since it's another 4-drop, but uh, it's a more powerful card. So we'll try it this way. Being on the play also makes it less important to have those cheap answers. And there's a Silex as well. Opponent Esper Colors. And I'm okay playing a Silex for now. And then next turn we can either Deluge to draw, or Emperor to exile a creature, or start applying a bit of pressure. Opponent with a counter spell there, that's okay. Opponent's got a Celestis. So I could main phase Deluge just to keep it daytime so they don't get too loot, which I don't mind, it's unlikely that we need to exile anything with Emperor here. We can pretend to have a counter spell, but the opponent may not play around it anyways. And then I think we just grab two lands. Farewell can eventually exile the Celestis. So don't think we need to hang on to Silex. And then now I could pass to try and exile Shieldred with Emperor if they play around it. Then we can simply farewell next turn to get rid of Shieldred. The alternative was going for Depopulate right away. Opponent loots with Celestis. And a wedding announcement we can also clean up with our Sweeper, assuming there's no other counterspell. And yeah, double announcement. Opponent might respect Wandering Emperor, but I can still play it here. 
just to get a planeswalker out there. And then we'll plus, since we are gonna get rid of creatures. And then farewells can be quite devastating. Shieldred triggering one last time. And then I don't think we get rid of graveyards because of our own deluge. And we'll make a samurai. Okay, so now the board looks a lot cleaner. And we can try and take over. Opponent does have two cards left, and an Invoke Despair is pretty good. Getting rid of Planeswalker, Creature, and Drawing. But now we feel pretty comfortable passing with Deluge available. And it's time to find some counter spells. Another wedding announcement is pretty good. And we find... Probably a devious cover-up and scrutiny. And then I think I just pass with counterspell available, Wandering Emperor to maybe ambush the 1-1 one -one token. They might have some spot removal that was sitting in their hands, ready to be used. Because we want to avoid our opponent drawing cards with wedding announcements, so we need to keep their creature count low. And then we could decide to, at some point, just main phase a big scrutiny to refuel. Don't think we need to do it quite yet. So I'll make another samurai tank for two. And pass it back. Can always scrutiny to draw three at instant speed. But yeah, opponent has seen enough, we've got a grip full of cards, and our opponent knows that they're not beating a blue-white control deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems fine. Got some early enchantment removal, a couple counter spells. Take it from there. Put in blue-black. We can hit our land drops early on, which is important in these grindy matchups. So we can eventually pull ahead with our card advantage. So our opponent Grixis colors. And a Fable. Yeah, that's better to counter than to destroy. And then... Yeah, it's a close call between Syncopate and Negate. I think I'll go with uh, Syncopate here. Since we do have answers to creatures with Scorn and Destroy Evil can answer something like Shieldred if that shows up. And of course Syncopate will get weaker as the game goes on. Graveyard Trespasser. I cannot quite kill here. Yeah, I don't love countering it with Scorn. But Trespasser will transform to a 4-4. I guess at that point we can destroy it. Even though it's going to be a 2-for-1 in the opponent's favor. It's still important for me to keep Scorn for bigger, scarier threats and spells. So I think we let that slide. And then I might have to uh, discard land here to destroy evil. Although I will probably take a hit so we can keep up Scorn and cover up for any other threats they might play. Alright, so end of turn, we'll destroy. And discard a waste. Okay, and now we get to pass with all our counter spells up and a scrutiny to maybe draw three. Corpse Appraiser would draw the opponent some cards. So, yeah, that's an annoying one. I think I still am tempted to let it slide. If I counter, they might have a make disappear to counter back, so... I would have to counter with a scorn so I can negate, or at least pay for make disappear. Which uh, makes more sense. Alright, let's scorn. They didn't seem to have a response, so I don't think they have a make disappear in hand. Picked up another scorn. 
Okay, we'll just keep playing this game until they play a card we don't mind them resolving, at which point we can draw. If not, we'll keep countering stuff. Invoke Despairs, definitely counter-worthy. And I think we cover up just to be mana efficient. And uh, shuffle some cards back. Don't think we need another Destroy Evil, but Scorn's pretty good to put back. Okay, Revelry right now would draw a card and gain four. That might be enough. Don't need the tokens necessarily. Harvester is fine. Not gonna Fateful Absence it. Okay, not drawing the lands here could be a problem, but uh, we'll just pass with a plan of scrutiny for three. Opponent maybe looking at the blood token to discard a removal spell, that's not doing much. Infernal Grasp, exactly proving my point here. So we'll take three. Opponent's got their clock. But we still have a lot of time to answer it. And a Massacre for zero, just to deal a bit of extra damage, that's fine. Anything else? Nope. Scrutiny for three now. And hope it resolves. They might have picked up. Make disappear in the meantime. They did. Alright. So now we're not pulling head on cards. But we're still, you know, holding quite a few answers. So... I'm tempted to take another 3 for a turn or 2 before firing off Absence. We might also draw a Sweeper in the meantime, which would be nice if our opponent commits another threat to the board. And Absence would give the opponent a clue token, which I would rather avoid here. Right, another Invoke Despair, now we'll negate to keep the more flexible Scorn for later. And there's Depopulate. Alright, so now can maybe wait for them to play another creature. Problem with Depopulate, I guess it also lets them draw because Harvester's multicolor. So maybe Absence is looking better now. I think I'll take another 3 damage and then we'll decide whether to Depopulate or Absence, depending on if they play another creature. Alright, let's Absence. Opponent does get to draw, trigger Massacre, which we could destroy, but I'll keep this as an answer for maybe a Shieldred or a Fable if that shows up. And then we're really hoping to find another card draw spell. Trespasser during night. Probably just untap and depopulate. Opponent might have another Meat Hook Massacre in hand. So I don't know if destroying the current one really helps as much. Could also destroy the Glutton, but then we'll have to discard a card. And I would still like to hit my land drops. So opponent drains us for two by exiling their own creatures. Since they still have plenty of creatures for future corpse appraisers. Alright, let's depopulate. A one for one answer. Still took a bit of damage in the process between Massacre and the Glutton triggering. So we're not ahead in that exchange necessarily. But we have to have a bit of faith in our deck to eventually deliver the goods. Bankbuster, I don't think we can let resolve since that's just going to draw them too many cards. Silex, would have been nice to have earlier. We'll play it now. That can answer future Bankbusters. But now we're exposed to another Invoke Despair if they have one. Shield roots is fine. We can either untap, use Silex, destroy evil, or take two and then depopulate, which is still a one for one answer. I think I'll take the two and depopulate and keep destroy evil for later. Although depopulate can answer 
Cards like Trespass are a little bit better. And if Fable shows up, we can just use Silex to answer it. Alright, so I'll destroy now. The upside of using Silex is we get rid of Massacre, so we don't keep getting drained for one. So there's lots to consider. Okay, for now I'm just going to keep hitting my land drops. Opponents out of threats, at least. And another bank buster, I'll be forced to use Silex. X equals 2. So they likely have another Meetog Massacre in hand. Probably another Infernal Grasp at least. And our opponent's probably drawn more cards than we have this game. So we need to resolve a big Scrutiny or Memory Deluge. Yeah, there's a Massacre again. And a Fable. That's a good one. Alright, Farewell's a good one too. So clean everything up, including graveyards. And we can pay for Make Disappear, even if they copy it. We'll leave us tapped out. Opponent's gonna cut down just to drain us for one. All right. What's next? Invoke Despair kills us. Okay, Scorn is good insurance. So the game continues. Abandon Mire just hoping to find a creature, which they actually did. Could have worked out poorly. At least the appraiser doesn't draw, so we can let it resolve and then depopulate to deal with it, although that will draw them a card. So maybe I should have scorned, but wanted to keep it as an answer to a lethal invoke despair. Now we'll have to depopulate, let them draw. So our opponent is still ahead on that exchange. But at least now we have the fuzzy feeling of having counter spells on an empty board. And yeah, we just need to find some card draw to pull ahead. Four big card draw effects in the deck between double deluge, double scrutiny that are left. Shieldred we have to syncopate for four, so make disappear, would counter it, but they don't have it. Alright. Play planes, pass. And invoke despair we can luckily counter. So there's one invoke despair left, if I'm not mistaken. And there's scrutiny. Okay. Big decision points. How much do we cast it for? Need to leave up at least two mana on the off chance that they had a uh, make disappear in hand, but also just to potentially play a land and still have a counter spell afterwards. So X equals six or seven. Let's make it seven. Since we haven't played a land yet. And then do want to tap the wastes. That works. And sadly, our only counter spell is Devious Cover Up, so we could still die to another Invoke Despair. So at that point, do I play Silex? Think we still keep up appearances that we might have another counter spell here. Can maybe march a Blitzed Underdog, for instance. Iganjo can also maybe save us. Alright, they actually found the fourth Invoke Despair, sadly, so we die. So yeah, I could have cast Scrutiny for one less, but uh, yeah, things had to line up in a very specific way and the opponent needed to have the fourth Despair. So things don't always line up perfectly. We finally got the card draw spell, just needed one more turn to stabilize, but things didn't quite go our way. Blue-white control is not the easiest deck to pick up and play, definitely takes a few reps to master it and kind of get to know the metagame, which is usually when control decks step in to take over, is once there is a more established metagame, you can line up your answers to opposing threats. 
But uh, if the metagame keeps shifting and there's a good mix of aggro combo control decks, then it becomes more difficult for control decks to adjust, especially in a best of one environment. But currently with all the black midrange decks and the format, I do think blue-white controls are relatively well positioned, although those decks still remain pretty tricky to beat, as you could see here. But for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.